to thine own self be true. Ah, Shakespeare. <laughs> I think it's a challenge to be true to oneself, especially when your identity of self changes abruptly at some point in your life. Now, I come before you today as an actor who uses a wheelchair, but I spent the first 20 years of my life on two feet. Everything changed abruptly. I was a junior in college and went out to dinner one night with friends, and on the way back, uh, we were rear-ended on the freeway at top speed. And I was uh, left with a C T4 level spinal cord injury, which for those of you who don't know, spinal cord injury means that I was permanently paralyzed below my chest with no feeling or movement. So talk about throwing a wrench into the process of learning to be true to yourself. Suddenly, I didn't even know myself. I mean, never as a kid had I envisioned my future self as a non-standing disabled person. I mean, disabled, hell no. I was supposed to be an Olympic athlete, an Oscar award winner, and president all at the same time. But all of a sudden, I was the embodiment of people's worst fears and vulnerabilities. How do you find a way to be okay with that? Now, I'll say that Growing up, I loved to perform, loved it, and I was good at it. But the last thing that I wanted to do after my injury was get back on stage and display myself as a person I didn't even know anymore. And to be honest, I didn't even think there was any possibility to get back on stage because of the widespread inaccessibility of so many theater stages and because of the attitudinal inaccessibility of people who think that a wheelchair is like code for not able to do things, <laughs> including act. But then I found Family, a Denver theater company for actors with disabilities. I began to perform with Family, and uh, all of a sudden, I was surrounded by people with multiple sclerosis, cerebral palsy, visual impairments, hearing impairments, uh, you name it. But they weren't running away from their situations. They were getting on stage and sharing their voices and their talents and owning it. And rather than seeing their disabilities as limitations, they were maximizing them as creative assets. I mean, turning wheelchairs into horses and chariots and other things. And uh, forming a chorus kick line of visually impaired actors to represent blind corporate greed. <laughs> or using a wheelchair to create the illusion of conjoined twins when one actress could walk and the other couldn't, or re-envisioning a sword fight to fit with the tricep limitations of a quadriplegic, and yes, duct taping the sword to his hand. <laughs> I began to think outside the box about my own acting instrument, my body, my voice, my emotions, my social identity and to discover myself anew without judgment. And all of a sudden, it was like I was this big ball of creative possibility. I found that I could use my titanium parts to create tap rhythms. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Thank you. I found that my wheels had a grace of movement that my walking legs and feet never had. Using uh, abdominals that weren't supporting my breath in the same way taught me that volume isn't the only way to make your voice powerful. And suddenly, I had a new emotional connection to the characters I was playing, characters that were dealing with their own insecurities and vulnerabilities. Now, after my injury, society, classified me as disabled because they said I wouldn't perform daily acts of living in the same way. Everything from entering a restaurant to driving or going to the bathroom. And it's true. I don't perform these acts in the same way. And on stage, I don't perform or act in the same way. But who's to say that my way of acting or being in this world using a wheelchair is inferior? I mean, yes, it's different, but different is exciting and refreshing, especially in the arts. And I found that being true to my own differences has made me a better performer. It's made me a better human being, 
and allowed me to connect with other human beings more deeply on stage and off. In fact, my wheelchair has become my greatest asset in learning about myself and the world and in teaching others to do the same. So today we're here talking about action, about acting, <laughs> for good, for change. But before you all run out of here today, ready to change the world, as I'm sure you will, uh, consider this concept. The first revolution is internal. Theater has given me my internal revolution and taught me to see possibility where others may only see deficit. I encourage you to think about whether you've had your own internal revolution and to find whatever it is that enables you to be true to yourself. Because whether we're trying to change the world through the arts or social work or science or business or engineering, <laughs> we first have to know ourselves and find compassion for whoever it is we truly are. Only then can we find compassion for others and move beyond ourselves to change the world. Thank you. Thank you. And now, uh, because performing is my drug of choice, <laughs> I would like to leave you with a short performance, and I will be accompanied by my dearest friends, Donna Debrasini, Mitch Jervis, Daniel Shevlin, and Leonard Barrett, Jr. Sure. 